Hi Mike, how's it going? Excellent Karina, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. So firstly, just want to thank you for taking the time to speak to me and hopefully being able to offer some practical guidance around navigating our rights with the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990. Not a problem. Okay, so probably the most logical place to start with this chat is let's establish exactly what the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990 is. Well, you'd go right to the start of the, the Bill of Rights, and I've got it up here on another screen. And even before the very first section, it says it's an act to affirm, protect and promote human rights and fundamental freedoms in New Zealand, and to affirm New Zealand's commitment to the ICCPR, which is the International Covenant, uh, Covenant of Civil and Political Rights. So that's what it's there for. Yes. And tell me a little bit as to why it's important that every Kiwi is schooled in this. Why should we know about it and why should we know what's in it? That's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I've found, I mean, I've been studying law for about 10 years now. Um, all started because I got a $30 speeding camera ticket. And um, what I found is going around the country and helping out other organisations and whatnot in the last few years, the amount of people in New Zealand that aren't familiar with just their basic rights is astounding. <laughs> and I always put it to me that why on earth would, wouldn't they teach this in school? Why don't they teach any legislation in school? It's supposed to be there for everyone to know and Crimes Act 1961 section 25, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So it, it's very important just for people to know their basic rights but I, I find everybody is so built up on just trying to keep food on the table and a roof over their head um, that they've become very apathetic and I don't mean that in an insulting way it's just you know it's it's sad and I've, I've noticed especially since the COVID started up that there are a lot more people out there starting to learn them which is a brilliant thing every person should know what their rights are especially when dealing with the police or any other agency or so-called authority out there um, yeah, so th that's what I think. I think it should be taught in school from day dot. Yeah. So, so to be clear, you don't necessarily have a qualification in law or a career no. in law? No, no. no? I, okay. Uh, when, I, when I said to my wife many years ago that I wanted to, you know, start studying law and legislation, the very first thing she did, and God bless her for it, is she bought me law dictionaries. You know, Black's Law, New Zealand, and New Zealand works on Butterworth's Law. All right, so because it's much like if you're going to Japan, if you're going to go and go to a different place where there's a different language spoken, you should know what the language means. Otherwise, you're just talking gibberish. So um, yeah, and, and that was a big eye opener. Going to the um, also to the etymology of words, um, which is basically where they came from. The, the founding, because the principle is always the most powerful. So you go back to where words come from. Um, and I find, I've also found the smallest words are the most defining in the av of, um, you know, like, do you live in New Zealand? Do you? Yeah. No, you don't, you live on it. <laughs> don't you? Yeah. And what yeah, exactly are we, what, what, what exactly are we talking about here? What is New Zealand? Are we talking about the, the land mass or the territorial sovereignty that's been defined in legislation? So it's, um, yeah, it can be very fun. And I always look at it as a totem pole. Um, you know, right at the top, we're all just men and women, members of mankind. And then you, you step yourself down one level to a human being. Now, what, what is a hue? A hue is a color. So you're a color of man. Then you have different capacities. You have your legal capacities, um, your political capacities, you have all sorts of different capacities and, and as we know police act in the capacity of a constable but then they're also enforcement officers enforcing legislation so in, in common common law or, or what constables are supposed to be acting under common law is is there to protect people's from you know no harm loss fraud it's that simple um, everything else in legislation is made to 
prohibit or restrict in some way and there's usually a monetary transfer in some form so yeah I'm not legally trained um, although I have had a lot of fun with lawyers in court I love going to court you know a lot of people have fear of court well that's where you, you, you go in there with that sort of mentality you're gonna lose straight away um, mm. so yeah it, it's a court what do you do on courts you play games you use rackets you know everything's a racket so um, mm. yeah I go in there with fun and enjoyment and it really does put them off their game a lot. <laughs> so. Oh, I bet it would, I bet it would. <laughs> okay, so you don't have a specific qualification on nope. work or a career. No. Nope. I employment. would not want to yeah. be part of their club. I do not want to be part of their club or <laughs> held to Fair you know enough. their rules, so But yeah. you would say that you fit the bill of an everyday Kiwi who's schooled up and had some wins. Tell me oh, yeah. about some of these wins. Oh, um, well, I mean, I had some losses first before wins. You know, I, 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 when I first started law, there was um, the, the freemen of the land type stuff, the common law stuff, where you, you watch a lot of YouTube. You know, you, YouTube's like a rabbit hole. You go down one end, it takes about five years to come out the other end and realise, bugger me, it's not what you expect it was. So, um, yeah, I, I went down the, that sort of movement, the, the freemen of the land, holding up your birth certificate in court and saying, I am not this person you know the legal person's here pointing to that talk to the paper all day long you know that didn't work they just ignore you i might as well have walked out of the court and not even been there because they just do their thing regardless um but then i got an 80 dollars speed camera ticket back in 2017 i think it was um on a motorway um and i thought to myself well this will be fun uh, and what I'd done is I'd discovered that there's this little fatal flaw in the infringement process for speed camera tickets. And that's um, when you first get your speeding camera ticket, you have a blue copy given to you in the post, you know. It says in the description, in that you drove motor vehicle exceeding yada yada yada, and um, that's it. Now most people will go, oh, it's going to cost me too much to defend, you know, apathetic, just pay the bill and get on with it. So they're admitting guilt straight away. But um, in New Zealand, everyone's presumed innocent until proven guilty and a speeding offence, even a parking offence, are criminal offences. So you go by the criminal um, rules, which is beyond a reasonable doubt has to be established. Now most people go in and say, look, I wasn't driving that fast, I was only doing this. Fine, you've just been, pros you've just been done. Because you've admitted that you were in the vehicle driving it at the time of the offence, that's it. So I just went in there and held my mouth shut and just started asking questions. And they, all they wanted to do was confirm me as the driver, which I never did. It's not for me to, to help them win their case. So it took 10 months, four court appearances, um, and I won. Um, basically, because the court and the police prosecution service, they breached like 25 different rules of procedures and, and um, they lost the entire court hearing. So because it was not in the public interest to retry me over a speed camera ticket, and I'm sure they didn't want the camera guy on the stand for another three hours being questioned by me, which was enjoyable, um, that they just dismissed. But in my submissions, there were a strong evidential foundation for the infringement offence, and that's clear on the law that would have been placed before your honour had we proceeded and I think you've already been referred to section 133 and 145, but I think we need to address the issue of costs. Costs? All right. So can I deal with it on this basis that the charge is dismissed by consent? Yes, ma'am. I seek leave to withdraw, but I'm happy if you wish to dismiss it. I think it has been dismissed because it's, well, you can't relay it. Yes. No, ma'am. Your Honour, could I just add, under section 133 it says that the registered owner or owners are liable. I would point out that the liable only means upon conviction, and I still maintain the presumption of innocence until the evidence proves that. Sure, that's... I've also spoken to Jackson Cutting this morning in regards to the missing recordings as well, and he's looking into that for me. Thank you. Thank you. So I think that's a very pragmatic, very sensible attitude to take, Miss Blackmore, in this circumstances. The charge will be dismissed by consent. Um, then I thought, okay, I've finally cracked it because what I, what I was doing was I was using their own rules 
for their own court, playing their own game, and beating them be simply because a lot of them don't know their own rules. Um, so then I challenged Auckland Transport over a parking ticket outside, ironically, Henderson's um, district court. Well, I get in the post. Auckland Transport are uh, giving me a ticket, as I can see here, under section 40 and rules 4 and 6 of the road user rules, section 40 of the Land Transport Act, for being parked, what is the wording, parked in an area marked by broken yellow lines. Got a parking ticket there. So um, I protested to get all this, it was because the road markings were incorrect, you know, there was dotted yellow lines, but there was also what they call the white hockey sticks, which marks a car park. So that's confusing, that's misleading directions. And I, you know, if you're driving along, you see the hockey stick first, you don't realize you're parked on broken yellows and there shouldn't have been that confusion to begin with. So um, I ended up protesting outside the courthouse until I think it was the 17th of January the following year when they actually went and corrected the road markings. And to me, well, if it wasn't broken, why fix it? So the fact that they corrected the markings proved that it was wrong to begin with, so I won. And um, during the debacle, before the, the hearing, um, I decided to do a couple of Official Information Act requests to Auckland Transport to find out from the time I got my ticket until January when they fixed the road markings, how many other people they issued tickets. And there was another 11 plus me. Um, so after I won, I simply reminded Auckland Transport that uh, Section 242 of the Crimes Act means you cannot gain money through misleading or, you know, misdirecting people. So they had to refund the other 11 people, whether they liked it or not. I don't know who they are. You know, they didn't breach any privacy and tell me who these people were. I just had numbers mm -hmm. to go by, but yeah, confirmed they had to refund them. So yeah, little wins like that helps. And you know, go around, yeah. go around and I'll see someone getting clamped in a car park. I'll just take the clamp off for them. You know, there's, there's no law for them to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess you say a little bit of a freedom fighter. I like to stand up for your rights. I've recorded in my years over 120 speed cameras. I love to park down the road with a rotating sign saying, be aware, speed camera ahead. You can see my car is over there. There's a sign out. GFL 411. And people go, you can't do that. Well, wrong, you can. Especially if you're not even in view of the camera. So you're not mm. interfering in any way. And the way I do it is, um, well, the way I, I look at it is, I'm, I'm slowing people down, which is the desired result anyway. But I'm also saving the police money from having to issue tickets. I'm saving the court being chewed up by any challenges. And the person's getting slowed down. I've had many people stop and thank me for doing a public service, just warning them. Here you go, mate. High five, but often thought about it myself. Oh, I've done it for quite a long time. Good on you. 107 in five years, and there's been seven of their speed cameras in the last two fucking weeks in this area. Yeah, right. 86. All was in the 50. K area, in it? 86 million dollars. Nothing made last to year. do with road safety, eh? No, it's all revenue, mate. They call it crown revenue. Hey, I thought about it myself. Good on you taking the time to do it. Oh, mate, nothing else to do. Waiting for the wife at the gym. <laughs> I've had, you know, the opposite as well. I get angry people. But... What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Why are you doing it? To slow people down and save them money at the same time. Where's that? Where's them pay their bones from? Pay the Yeah. If they go to court and the found guilty, sure. If I'll get a ticket anyway, I'll get the message. Yeah? But you're not doing anybody any favours. Aren't I? No. You're entitled to your opinion. Yeah, and I'm the one that's had five cars through our fence in the last I've 12 months. I've a few of them, it's terrible. Yeah. They should slow down well before now. Yeah, and perhaps if they start getting a bit of hit in the pocket, they might lose. No, they don't. Well, you're doing this thing exactly half a minute, is it? The only thing this is doing is saving them from getting revenue. It's that simple. Do you know how much they made last year? I don't give a fuss how much they made. You get that in this world? I don't care. Yeah. I mean, I'm always going to look on the bright side of life, you know? Yeah, some of those wins you um, 
Nancy rattled off to me, yeah. those probably wouldn't have really occurred to your average person that actually you can challenge this or you can challenge that. I'm just maintaining my presumption of innocence. That's all I was doing because I read the rules, knew where I stood. Um, like I was saying before about capacities, if they wanted to put me into this capacity as acting as a defendant, then the defendant is entitled to a few things, such as disclosure, Criminal Disclosure Act 2008, sections 12 and 13, initial and full disclosure. Police never give people initial disclosure before their first court hearing, and yet they're supposed to have it. They'll try and hand it to you on the day, and then you're supposed to read it before entering a plea. No, nah, doesn't work that way. So, um, yeah, it, it, and it's fun. I mean, I enjoyed beating three police prosecutors in that <laughs> ticket. And, he, and he's, they're even slipping occasionally and turning to me and calling me their learned colleague. And I'm going, hey, hang on. <laughs> I'm not one of you guys. <laughs> so, yeah, I have uh, lots, lots of fun. No. And, and you've got to do it in an enjoyable yeah. way or humour. Humour always makes things come over better um, as opposed to being angry or yeah. emotional. The court doesn't care about your emotions, you know, so don't go in there with an emotional upset. Be as cold and, and just static as you can be in there just as they are to you so it's sort of like looking at a mirror for them if they don't like it much and so yeah anyway carry on anyway let's take a bit of a trip down memory lane mm -hmm. um so without i'll start that one again <laughs> um, yeah taking a trip down memory lane i was thinking back to a time where the pandemic didn't exist yeah. um so, yeah, if we're taking a trip down memory lane and without getting into any super specific just yet in terms of the picture, mm -hmm. what were some of the freedoms that we had when this government was elected into mm. power? Well, we had them all. And, and that's the thing, we still have them now. The, the Bill of Rights isn't um, all of a sudden disappeared because of the COVID-19 Public Health Response Act. You know, the Bill of Rights is supposed to be preferred over others, although Section 4 of the Bill of Rights does say that other enactments can do what they do and ignore the Bill of Rights as well. So it, it's it's knowing what is higher on the totem pole. And if you're going to go through processes, you know, just like anything, analyse anything, there's a step-to-step -step process. So, um, yeah, that, that's all I did was I just went up rung one, rung two, rung three, and with the, with the yeah. speed camera process, I found that it's easier just to rip, rip rung two out and it's, everything just come crashing down. So, yeah, it, as I was saying before about the speed camera ticket, they give you the blue copy, it's 28 days later they'll give you a reminder notice, and it's only on the reminder notice that they put the actual legal provisions that you're supposed to be breached. And that's called being informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings, which prosecutors don't even understand when you ask them about it. Um, and because I had, when I got the first ticket, I instantly requested a hearing. So they never had a chance to create the reminder notice and all they did was copy the information from the blue one over onto the charging document or the summons. And so there was provisions missing. I wasn't being fully informed. There was no legal provision, section 40 and section 133 of the Land Transport Act or Road User Rules 5.1. None of that was on there. So I'm standing there going, why am I here? Can someone please tell me? And finally, um, my second hearing, uh, Judge Mathers cottoned on to what I was talking about and she ended up getting very angry with the police prosecutor and ordered him to uh, give me full disclosure within seven days because I've been asking for five months at that stage for it. And they just, they just, um, you know, the arrogance of, of some police when you're asking them things you're entitled to and they just won't respond. So yeah, that's what I was getting. And I could prove that because I've been sending emails and had proof of all the correspondence. So they didn't uh, you know, have a leg to stand on when it came to that. But um, as far as other freedoms, you know, you've, freedoms of movement, um, freedom of expression, you know, that's one I love. Section 14 of the Bill of Rights, the right to seek, receive and impart information and opinions of any kind in any form, which means you can stand on the public sidewalk and record all day. And I love going around and recording courthouses, prisons, police stations, I've had Henderson, Otahuhu, Manukau police stations, all re-educated on public photography because that's what it's boiled down to. So, um, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. That was an interesting one which jogs my memory back mm -hmm. to 
when I was studying, which wasn't that long ago, mm -hmm. but I remember in media law, we had a bit of a section around where you're legally um, permitted to take photos and footage. And Correct. when we came down to the part where you're actually very legally entitled to take um, footage or images out in public on the sidewalk or whatever, sure. that was that was quite interesting because it like would make this mental block already that we couldn't do that, that somehow that was in breach of the privacy, when in fact we're out in the public and you can't actually have a reasonable expectation of privacy if mm. you're in public. Yeah, I, I love correcting the general public's delusions of privacy in public. There's, there's two places that I can easily say where you, there is an expectation of privacy, which is public changing rooms or a public toilet. That's why there's no cameras there. They'll have them outside the door when you're entering, but there's none in there for obvious reasons. You expect privacy. Um, but out on the sidewalk, if you're acting in a public capacity, like these testing stations I recorded back on um, just before Christmas last year, they, I, had, I was approached by security, by nurses. I even had a nurse try and hit me with a car when she was leaving. And um, I'm still chasing that up with the NRHCC, which is National Regional Health Coordination Centre, which seem to be protected by all the DHBs. I've made many phone calls and cannot get in contact with the NRHCC directly. But um, I mean, like, but more onto the rights, there's peaceful assembly, there's association, there's freedom of movement, and discrimination, which seems to be having a lot lately. I mean, look at what happened to Brad Blukey and um, being discriminated for not wearing a mask, going to buy some rum, and next thing you know, you've got these so-called constables acting like thugs, and he did everything correctly. They were not acting in accordance with the law, which means they were acting outside the law, and he had every right under Section 48 of the Crimes Act to defend himself against it. So, um, yeah, it, it's really knowing the sections. These days, the, the police have a, have a little note on me saying, that um, if they're called to a thing where I'm possibly there, that only a senior sergeant or higher should speak to me because if it's a normal constable, um, apparently I have the ability to make them look unprofessional and uneducated. Um, it's not me, it's really I'm just capturing it with the camera. They're doing it all themselves. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And, um, yeah, you seem to get a good kick out of it. Yeah, well, you've got to enjoy life, so why not? I mean, um, many years ago, 34 years ago, I had a brain aneurysm and died. So I, they brought me back, and I figured I've got to be here for some reason, so why not make the most of it? So, yeah. <laughs> very, very positive and optimistic outlook on, on that. Yeah, you've got to be. Yeah. So, so to clarify, with the COVID-19 response mm -hmm. act, does that at all override no. what's already there in the Bill of Rights? No, because Not at all. The, the, the Bill of Rights are, are based on common law, so they have more standing than any legislation. Legislation is sort of like the, the lowest bit of the totem pole. Everything else is high above it um, to human rights. But then New Zealand will only um, affirm their commitment to the UN, like the ICCPR or a UNICROC. Um, and a good example of that would be Paul Zinfield. Um, when he won uh, in December, I think it was December 4th, 2019, at the UN, and the UN found New Zealand guilty of torture, um, they told New Zealand that they had to make it publicly known, public, you know, that of the finding. I never saw anything in any media about this finding happening, and yet Paul, no, no. And, and yet Paul had won. And they just really, just before they had to respond to the UN, COVID kicked in. And then all of a sudden there was all these delays because of COVID. You know, all, all mm. the common cold. But very convenient smoke screen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that's exactly what they're doing now. You know, all of these orders and clauses, which are subsections of the orders, are all on the lowest rung of the totem pole. You've got legislation, rights, freedoms, all of those things that are far above and enshrined and not just New Zealand legislature but everywhere else in the world too um, so yeah it's it if people knew their rights more they would be and knowledge is power it's very um it's very freeing the more knowledge you have 
the more you can stand up to the bullies, which is what we're basically getting to, dealt with. Um, you know, the politicians were supposed to be elected in there to represent us, not have power over us. Um, everything is supposed to be in public readings, and you see these bills go through in one day, three readings, and then passed. So they read the entire thing three times in one day. Did, was there any public hearing about? No, they just do it. Um, because they call a state of emergency and then it's pretty much martial law, they can do whatever they like. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you could talk me through say some of the breaches which you see are going on in today's world, because obviously we do have the COVID-19 response thing going on. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what are some of the breaches which are going on in our same site? Like for example, um, were those sign-in sheets outside the store where you've got people's names and numbers? Yeah. Would that be a breach? Absolutely, but the, the government won't take any ownership for it because they'll say, oh, you know, we've put all the, all the information out there and it's up to the individual business to go looking for that information, but they don't. Um, a good example of that, I had uh, a gentleman down in Levin send me a photo of the sign-in register and it was blatantly out on the public sidewalk for a cafe and he went in and tried to tell the owners you know you can't do that it's up to you to ensure that the, your your patron's private information is kept private it should not be viewable for other people to see otherwise anyone can walk past like he did take a snapshot and now you've got 20 people you can go and commit identity fraud with or try and con them on a phone call you know it's, it's just it's ridiculous so um, all I have to do, and what I've done is go to the Privacy Commission, and they have guidance on it. But the New Zealand government don't tell all businesses to go and look at the Privacy Commission on the guidance. And the number one cause for a privacy breaches is those sign-in registers. Um, the owner of Whispers Cafe says, you know, I got it from the Ministry of Health, thinking he was doing right. He got the sign-in, but yeah. he didn't understand that it's up to the individual business to ensure that's protected and if not in a complaints made you can get hit twenty thousand dollar fine for it which will shut down small businesses but then we don't know if that's the actual agenda now do we perhaps we're looking for a social credit system coming in soon or perhaps a global reset we don't know do we no they don't tell us they don't put it out in public like agenda 2030 and, and you know, they always like to tell you what they're doing and it's up to the ignorance of people to not know. Because they're too mm. busy just living their own lives trying to get by day to day. So it's, it, it's sad. And all I can say is the more law you learn, the more empowered you become, and the more you can actually fight back and defend what you already have and haven't lost. See, the, the thought that you've lost all of these freedoms, no you haven't, they're all there. You know, and it's like a muscle. If you don't exercise it, it atrophies and dies. So ex they say you can go out and exercise every day, can't you? Great, so go and exercise your rights instead of your legs. 